What's up, nerds, and welcome to another episode of The Bandwagon Fan. This is the show where we talk about all things pop culture and what we're into right now. I'm Josh. I'm AJ. And hey, boys are back at it again. Um, boys are back. But, yeah, we're back, dude. So a while a while ago, we talked about Static Season 1, the comic series. Uh, Static Season 2 is now out. It, it has I can't I think, wait. two issues out. <laughs> oh, um, that's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. So really exciting stuff. I'm a big DC fan. Their whole movie universe is like so up in the air right now with the whole James Gunn uh, taking over the leadership. And something we had kind of talked about a little bit before was that there might be a static live action produced Mm. by Michael B. Jordan. And if you're uh, paying attention to the Zeitgeist right now, you know that he is out there making movies. And we're here to talk about Creed 3. Yeah, uh, is this his first? Is this the first movie he directed? I was wondering the same thing because at the I didn't even realize he had directed it until the credits yeah. popped up, and I was like, "Hey, that is really cool that he starred and directed this movie." And I feel like a lot of times when actors do that, like in my experience, at least movies I have seen, like it turns out to be a good movie. Like the performance is spot on, and the direction <laughs> is solid too. So. I don't if this is his first foray into directing and starring like major props to him for, for, you know, going on that journey. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I kind of felt like, I wonder if Sylvester Stallone was like a, a, a catalyst in him wanting to direct his own Creed movie because Stallone oh, yeah. also did that for, I think most of the Rocky movies. I think the first one, was also Stallone's first one that he, I think, at least wrote. I don't remember if he directed that one. Okay, I, yeah, that, um, that's crazy. So I wonder if that's that's really that's really what went down. But we can get into that a little bit later. Um, okay. Yeah, have you watched any of the other Creed movies before? I I've seen the first one. I, I actually don't know if I saw the second one because I actually oh. got to the movie theater. I was like, wait, have I seen the second one? Because I don't yeah. remember. I, to be honest, I don't really remember the most of the story other than a YouTube video I was watching that was talking about it. So I, I don't know if I remember the story from that or because I've actually seen the other two movies. Okay, yeah. I have I love Rocky. I'm a huge Rocky fan. Uh, as a kid, Rocky 1 and 3 and 4 were like my favorite. Or excuse me, Rocky 1 and 2 and 4, like my favorite Rocky movies growing up. Um Everyone can universally agree Rocky Five is just one of the worst Rocky movies they ever made. And of course, the technical Rocky Six movie was just absolutely asinine. A 60-something-year-old Sylv- Sylvester Saron boxing a 30-something-year-old boxer and going the distance <laughs> makes absolutely no sense. But it's still fun. You know, it was direct it's it's shot well, directed well. Um so when they announced these, uh, I think the first Creed movie came out, um, Boy, I want to say it's, it's been a minute. Yeah, 2016, I want to say. 2015, I was close. First one came out in 2015. There was a lot of hesitation from my end. Uh, for those who may not remember, Michael B. Jordan wasn't the virtual global superstar he is now. So, uh, yeah, it just there. It was just a lot of question marks, right? Uh, me, personally, I knew Michael B. Jordan at this point still from the wire he he plays a character uh, okay. uh, from season one of the wire so had he done um, fruitvale station yet yes he had done fruitvale station and at this point i think oh boy i don't know what other major movie credit he had on his name at this point but he like i said he wasn't he wasn't uh uh who makes the sexiest list man who makes that i was gonna say People magazine or People magazine, yeah, he wasn't people's. He wasn't people <laughs> magazine's uh, sexiest man yet, right? So he was still kind of small time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So needless to say, I was a little, there was a lot of hesitation. I love what they do with these Creed movies. Um, I think it's hard to make a boxing movie because there's only two, one of two results in a boxing <laughs> movie. <Yeah. laughs> You either win the fight or you lose the fight, right? And so I think what Rocky does as a as a franchise, as a as a universe, right? The uh, the uh, the RCU, the Rocky Cinematic Universe. Uh, I think what is um, what is really interesting and unique about it is that they they do such a good time, to- just 
do such a good job with with character work and making you care about the characters more than the fight, if that makes any sense, which I think is hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really, really hard to do. Um, so starting with this movie, uh, you said you watched the first one. I don't you don't necessarily need to have watched the second one. I do recommend it because I it does set up. I know that there are interests in making more of these movies. That's why I called it the Rocky Cinematic Universe, because uh uh Drago's son uh from Rocky Four, he's in Rocky, he's in Creed two. He plays the he plays the antagonist. Okay, so I have I have and seen the second one then. You have seen that one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So for those who may not remember or may not know, there's a very interesting arc with his character where because he lost um to uh, uh, Rocky back in you know the 80s, whatever, the Russian government basically just like ostracized him. And so he has been basically living vicariously through his son and trying to make him the world's greatest fighter. Uh, so that he can essentially reclaim glory. You know what I mean? And there was a lot that was said, um, a lot that was said in Creed 2 that wasn't actually verbalized, but I thought that was a really cool uh, layer. And I think they want to go deeper into that, which I I love it. I think that's awesome. So um, yeah, let's let's kind of just like vaguely or or generally kind of go over the movie. What what were some things that you liked about Creed 3 specifically? Like what were some things that you liked a lot? So you you touched on this and, and I totally agree that the whole Rocky, what'd you call it, the Rocky Cinematic Universe? R- RCU. I'm I'm, R- I'm just going to dub it. The RCU, the Rocky Cinematic Universe, yeah. <laughs> the RCU, like, yeah, like it does. I think it spawned a genre uh, of of movies where yeah, it's a boxing movie. But again, you either win the fight, you lose the fight. So they go into the c- character development. And this this movie, like it, it does that. It blends boxing, the physicality, the training, the blood, the sweat, and the tears with, mm. with the emotional struggles that, that come along now. It's just with fighting, but just being a human being, and specifically to these movies, just being a man. And I felt like this mm. movie in particular really... Um, takes a step forward into that, and 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 I'll I'll talk on this a little bit more too. Um, but I, it takes a step forward in being like, yeah, like being a well-rounded man. There's the physicality, but then there's also like the emotional aspect of like, who are you? And I thought this film did a good job of that. Like, there are a lot of cool fight scenes. There's a lot of engaging emotional scenes as well. I think you that's a such a good point because there are there's literal there's a literal line where uh Apollo's uh wife D she says like you can't punch all your problems and he's like I beg to differ you know what I mean and it's one of those things where it's funny because if you know his character you know that's he's hard-headed in that sense right he he always tries to resolve things with his fists and I think that the movie did such a good job of showing that even if you didn't watch the other two movies um, I think the movie did a really good job with that. So um, something that I really liked from this movie uh, were the stakes. I feel like we watch a lot of movies now where it's hard to care about the plot because we don't feel what the stakes are, right? Like sometimes the stakes in a movie are so fabricated that it's it's just hard to understand sometimes the stakes in the in the movie it's like well i already saw the trailer for this other movie so i already know this person is still alive you know what i mean like ant-man for example right like we already know yeah, it. like you yeah. know what i mean so like as an example but like it, the, the sometimes we watch movies nowadays and it's hard to it's hard to care throughout the story because the stakes don't feel real and i think that's one of the things that rocky the RCU set up since the first movie, right? That like, you don't know who's going to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rocky, spoiler alert for this now, what, 50, almost 60 <laughs> year old movie. Rocky doesn't win the first movie. Okay. He loses the fight. But the point was <laughs> he went the distance and he proved that he can't, he, he's a contender. You know what I mean? And so um, this movie has that same vibe. You know, there are literal stakes. The stakes are understandable. They're real. They're palpable. And I think that makes the movie engaging. I did not look at my watch, my phone, one time in this movie. Did not look at my phone a single time. Yeah, it was it was just that engaging. Well, and it's funny that you said that. This is a short movie 
compared to like it's not long yeah these, like what comes out these days and yeah. like, before i like before i went to the theater i checked the runtime i was like wow i like i was kind of excited i was like if they can pull off a good movie in less than two hours like that's a, a real testament to filmmaking and spoiler alert they did yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> what else what else did you like about the movie uh asl there is a lot of asl yeah, in this movie so cool <laughs> and, dude it was so cool it's so cool yeah it's and really like, cool i love that and like before we recorded I, I guess i have to say this there was a lot of loud obnoxious people in my theater <laughs> but i will say they at least had the courtesy to be quiet during those parts yeah a lot of the other emotional scenes they were being obnoxious during yeah. But in those scenes, like they they were quiet, and I think that's so cool. If you can make a movie theater quiet when there's actually stuff happening on screen, and it's not just like like a scenery scene. Did, did a quiet place like set that trend of like of like utilizing ASL as like not just like an inclusionary uh, form of 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 acting, but also just like. Like, I, I think what those scenes do so well is that it, it you have to communicate a lot with a little. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that leans so much into the show, not tell thing that we always talk about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, um, it, it adds depth to the world. It makes it feel real. Yeah. And I mean, like, the, the deaf community is so often kind of, like, cast aside in a lot yeah. of things. And I like that it's like, hey, you are part of this world. A Quiet Place was doing that. Um, I believe what was it? Uh, Hawkeye d- uh, did that a little uh, bit. There was the did, wasn't there a Coda? Isn't Coda? Isn't the actress in Coda? Isn't she deaf? Isn't that 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 uh, Coda? she's like a f- yeah? There was a movie that won, I believe the the Oscars last year. What? Best picture. Yeah. I didn't see that movie. I, I, I know I, what you're talking about now. I may be blanking. I may be wrong. Yeah. But I, I could have sworn that Coda, which won Best Picture, uh, the act. It's a movie about a a, yeah. a fishing father and daughter or something like that and she's deaf so they oh, have to like sign you know I what never, i mean which yeah. which is a which is an incredible premise in and of itself right so yeah well yeah. And, and, and like to further that it really like adds to the tenderness of adonis creed as a father and as a man mm. because he first learned asl i believe to communicate with bianca his his then his, girlfriend yeah um and like earlier on in the relationship because she was losing her hearing and so, like it, re- like to learn a di- new language for the person you love, like is a huge thing. And then, and like, and but she's like, she still has her hearing more or less. Whereas their daughter, I believe, is, is uh, like does not have hearing at all. I don't think so either. And yeah. So, like he, like the family, like had, like they chose to learn that. I- I've heard of families that don't learn ASL, even if they really? had like a child who who is deaf. Yeah. Which to me, like, I, I and like, I'm not going to cast judgment. I've never been in that situation, but that's so sad that you have someone who in your family you can't communicate with. And I guess mm-hmm. that you kind of have the same thing where you have like maybe a, a older relative, like a grandparent who doesn't speak English, and like the the you know second third generation kids only speak English. So I guess same, there's kind of something like that. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, and like I, I kind of get that also, too. Also, also pretty cool. The actress is actually deaf. Uh, Mila oh, Davis. Wow. Yeah, okay, that's pretty okay. cool. That's pre- that 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 makes it real. That's what makes it feel real, right? You, they literally have to communicate with her in sign. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, So yeah, that that to me was probably one of my most like beloved aspects of this movie was that there was yeah. an SL and it was engaging. Yeah, engaging, not just like a throwaway thing. Um. I, 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 one other thing that I love, I, I know I must sound like a broken record, but I, I damn it, I, I don't give a shit. Like, Jonathan Majors destroyed Dude. this role. He <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> killed it. Period. Like, if this man isn't nominated for an Oscar for this role, it, the Oscars are truly racist. I don't understand. this. Man, there, was a, there was a moment in the movie. Like, first of all, I love the tension that that Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan convey throughout so much of the movie, right? Because you understand watching the movie, like, man, what a what a what a weird position for both of these men to be in. You know what I mean? Where both of these guys come from a world where nothing is owed to them, nothing is 
uh, handed to them. Nothing's given to them lightly. And they have both had to fight for what they have. And I thought that was conveyed so well in the scene where, uh, what was his, uh, what was his name? Dame? Dame, uh, Dame. Was that his name? Uh, the, the Jonathan Majors character. I think it was yeah, Dame. Right? Diamond Dame. Dame. Yeah. Yeah. So he, when he came back and they, that scene where they had, they had coffee or, or breakfast or whatever, I thought that was so palpable because that, that moment when, when Michael B. Jordan tried to hand him cash, I, I just don't think a lot of people understand why that would make uh, Dame, Dame so angry because it's, it's one of these things. It's like, like we, they never had to ask anybody for money. They never, they never had to ask anybody for anything, but specifically, if you remember the beginning of the movie after Dame won his first, won that fight and he handed, uh, uh, Adonis some money as a, as like a older brother, younger brother, like I, like I'm going to look out for you. I don't think some people understand the the shame of that being rever- of reverse the envy of that being reversed and it's all conveyed through just subtle looks and words and I'm just like this is poetry in motion here. These are th- this is <laughs> yeah. poetry in motion. You couldn't write something better than this. This is this is real tension. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of I would call eye acting in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of like you get close up of, of the eyes. And yeah, like it takes a good performer to communicate through their eyes and yeah. Jonathan major Jonathan majors. I feel as like the actor of the year right now. Oh, he's killing it. He is Absolutely killing everywhere. It. And yeah. I am happy for him. Oh, and, and I think my favorite part of his performance is after he wins the fight against the, the belt holder, this, the, the, the switch that's flipped, right? Where it's almost like, it's almost like he, he pulls the mask off. And he's like, like this is this is who I am. This is what yeah. I am. You know what I mean? And it's the same person we saw at the beginning of the movie, the overconfident, yeah. the over the the, the over confident, but calculating. Yeah, calculating, overconfident, um, just like and and honestly proving a point that he should have been maybe one of the best fighters to ever live yeah. if he got a real legitimate chance, right? Yeah. Um, and he's doing it, and you know. So much of that, of his character, and I, I will say, if you want to lean into some of the things you may maybe did, didn't like, unless you had something else you liked about the movie. I do. Um, I, I appreciate a movie like this in the RCU doing mm-hmm. its best to kind of exist on its own. I think they only mentioned Rocky. They only mentioned Rocky like three times. Okay, I'm glad and, you brought that up. And yeah. I was I was so afraid they'd be like, remember when Rocky did this? Remember when Rocky did this? Hey, okay. do the Rocky pose. And okay. they didn't do a okay. whole lot of that. I don't think they even said his name in the movie. <laughs> no, they, they did. They did? Okay, okay. I think twice, maybe three times. Okay, I don't remember, but yeah. Be- because when they finally did it, I was like, wow, they went a long time without doing that. And it made me really happy. Yeah. Um, and, and so, like, it, it kind of t- tries to do its own thing, including the fact that um, to stand alone, like, the soundtrack is done by Dreamville, which I think yeah, is really cool. which is which awesome. Is- yeah. I, I listened yeah. to the, the soundtrack before. Uh, the, I watched the movie. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it's good. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> so yeah, th- those are the things that that I liked without going into like too spoiler specific scene type of things. <sighs> okay, so that I'm, I'm going to lean into what I didn't like. And as a longtime Rocky fan, I get the need to separate Rocky from the RCU because you can't have Homeboy just showing up in every Rocky movie. Like you can't. That makes no sense. Like he's going to be flying to Russia and he's going to Mexico. Like that doesn't make a ton of sense. So I get it. However, out of all the movies to exclude him from, I feel like it was a big mistake excluding him from this movie because the premise of this movie is parallel to the first Rocky movie. And if there was ever anyone to give Adonis advice on what he should have done in this scenario, for those who may not know that, you know, I guess I don't think this is spoiler territory, but uh, essentially Adonis's childhood friend and virtual brother wants a shot at being a fighter, right? And he's been in jail for a long time. And and out of maybe guilt or maybe, maybe yeah, guilt really is the motivator for, for leaving his friend, his brother behind. He tries to give him a chance at a, at a title fight and it kind of gets twisted upside down, right? Specifically, 
Um, the 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 trainer. Oh, I can't remember his name. Um, Duke. Duke also in the wire, by the way. Um, oh, really? Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I he love plays, Owen uh, Harris. He is so yes, underrated. He's another great actor. Okay, another uh, another another great actor. But anyways, Duke is like you can't let this guy fight. He's angry and he's he's trying to hurt the world. You know what I mean? And 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 it's and it was one of those things where it's like the other the other voice of dissent could have been from Rocky, right? Because I felt like all they needed to do was just have a scene in there where he thinks Rocky is going to side with him. Because he's like, you of all people understand what it means for someone to want their chance and not to get it. And he's going to be like, yeah, but not like this. You know what I mean? And I felt like that could have been an opportunity. And again, out of all the people in the RCU, I think he really should have been in <laughs> this movie. It would have made a lot of sense, but I get it. You know, I, yeah. I get why they didn't include him in the movie. Yeah, I, I, I guess- understand. I guess my pushback to that would be it kind of hammers home the fact that Adonis is too stubborn to ask for help when he needs it, when he clearly mm. needs it mm. in that movie. The fact that, and like, well, I'll get into this a little bit more. The fact that he doesn't know how, as a grown man to like deal with his baggage, yeah. like that's what got him into this mess. And yeah. And yeah, if he was a more emotionally mature man, he would have been like, Hey Rocky, I got, I'm in this situation. I need help. But you're well, right. You're never, right. He's never. He's never had to. He's never had to deal with his baggage before. Yeah. I mean, he even true. said in a. He even said in a in an earlier, or he said at some point in the movie, he's like, I I, I try to leave that behind. I'm summarizing, yeah. obviously, right? But he's like, I, I try to forget it. I try to leave it behind, and I can't. You know what I mean? So yeah, he's never had to deal with his baggage. He's worked all his life virtually to forget about it, and so for it to kind of just unravel in one day, was a uh, you know. It was, it was, that's how we mature. That's how we, that's how we get older. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually like talking about things we didn't like, I, I will say that they, they kind of touch on that a little bit. The fact that he's got stuff going on that he needs to deal with. Yeah. And I, I wish they would have like kind of dug a little deeper into that. Yeah. Apparently, um, uh, Ryan Cooler wrote on this. Yeah. I'm not and, surprised. And, um, uh, the other Michael B. Jordan are pretty pretty close yes yeah, so, uh, so we had the kuglers and uh and michael b jordan working on this so I'm, I'm i'm a little surprised like they didn't dig a little deeper don't know if that just like they wasn't in the scope of what they're trying to accomplish or if it was like a studio preference or what um so that's something i, I didn't quite like and the yeah. other thing i didn't like was nobody has cauliflower ears I know everyone's got perfect face from boxing <laughs> i was um, like dude he he like he is a well-seasoned boxer. The only person in this movie who probably had cauliflower ears w- w- was Canelo because he makes an appearance in the movie. He makes a. He makes a. Yes, he does. And Which, did you have you seen that video of Canelo with his son when his son runs up to him? No. Uh, his son runs up to him. He's like, "Hey, he's like, I fell, but I didn't cry." And Canelo goes, "Okay." He's like, and he like has a, a really good conversation with his son. He goes. Like it's okay. he's like okay like you you didn't get hurt so you didn't cry like that's fine, and his son's like yeah like but usually when I fall I cry, and then Canelo yeah. goes well, sometimes in life like bad things will happen and it's okay to cry, like sometimes mm. that's the only way you can get it out. And I was like yo this dude is like you know a very well accomplished boxer, and he is and he's like telling his son his little little boy raising yeah. him to be like hey it's okay yeah. to cry sometimes so. Yeah. I thought, that, that, that's pretty powerful, and yeah. I and that, that's so relevant to this movie, right? Yes. Because I think I think that's such a strong. Adonis thinks that to be strong, you have to physically be strong, right? And there's an emotional strength that I think sometimes we have to break through. And a scene that I really liked in the movie. Um, well, well, we'll get there in a second, but you know, there are there are scenes in this movie that I felt like conveyed that really well. Um, now. With that said, the only other thing I didn't like was a carryover issue from from Creed 2. I don't know if this is like camera work, positioning. Um, I think the actor that plays uh, Ivan Drago's son, Victor, Victor mm-hmm. Drago, I think he's like six. He looks like he's huge. Like They look like him and Michael B. Jordan look like they're in two different weight classes. Yeah, I was thinking that. And that was one of my issues with Creed 2. And so in this movie, I'm like, there's no way these guys would be fighting in a fight. I was thinking that he's almost 70 pounds bigger than Michael B. Jordan. Like once one punch is over, like it's, it's literally over. 
they can't be in the same weight class. That's the point yeah. I'm trying to make. There's no. no way. There's no physical way they're in the same weight class, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, uh. that's crazy to me. But um, let's go into scenes we liked. What, what was your favorite scene? F- uh, favorite scene. Oh, I kind of want to end on a positive note. Okay. Let, let's so, go with least favorite yeah. scene. Yeah. So, yeah. least favorite scene was we're going to go into spoilers. So, if you haven't seen the movie, got this far, just FYI. I mean, 25 minutes in. I mean, just. <laughs> Just, I'm just trying to be considerate. If you're still here and you haven't seen the movie, like God bless you. God bless. <laughs> Anyways, least favorite was when his mom dies. Yeah, that was random. That was because, a little random. Because it's like it was so not subtle when they're yeah. at the beginning. They're like, "You need to be careful. Ooh, you had a stroke. stroke. Oh yeah, no!" Yeah, I was like, yeah. right away, I'm like, "Okay, they're setting it up that she's gonna die in this movie, and like that's gonna be." you know, motivation for him to train harder and to overcome his hardships. Yeah. And so I was like, I mean, I get it. Like you, you kind of expect that from, from the RCU, but at the same time I was like, come on, like we have a very good creative team on this. I, I feel like you can do something a little, a little bit, bit more clever. And, and yeah. like, honestly, the only thing that saved it for me was Michael B. Jordan's performance. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's really easy for me to tear up uh, watching a movie and, and if, if a performer, if an actor performs a scene well, I will tear up to get me to cry. Like you have to have good writing and that th- that scene to me didn't necessarily have that. Yeah, uh, I, I I will have to echo uh, echo your your least favorite scene. I, I thought I felt like it wasn't necessary in this movie. Right. I felt like instead we should have just kind of leaned into the trauma that led him to where he is today. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, I think the one of the reasons why they, I, th- I think her name is Felicia Rashad from the Cosby show. I think that's her name. Um, but uh, the, I believe one of the things that led that conflict between them is the, the, the abandonment that he felt. And he even says this at one point in the movie that he's like, uh, Dame is more family to me than anyone in this house has ever made me feel. Yep. And she had no she had no rebuttal to that, right? Um, because if you don't know from the first Creed movie, he's never technically been proven to be Adonis's or to be uh, Apollo Creed's son. Uh, he is a bastard child that out of pity she took into the family because guilt, maybe, you know, I don't know. So there there's a lot of obvious past trauma and their fight before she passed away was kind of the last thing said. I just felt like it just didn't mesh with what the movie was trying to say, but you know, I felt like they at least got out of it cleanly where it didn't feel like, okay, that was a weird road bump. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, she's dead. Okay. You know, so uh, yeah, that was weird. But uh, what was your favorite scene? Quick honorable mention uh, would be the final fight. Yep. They uh, they try they did some they try to do something really cool where they try to tap into like the psychological intensity of the fight where yeah. like you get, like a jail cell door you you get like the one of the corners turns into like the punching bag thing from when they were kids like it it, it was cool like th- that they try to yeah. do something clever and different for your typical fight movie uh, so honorable mention to that my favorite scene actually was when Bianca calls out Adonis. Um, it's when he comes, it's when he comes home in the morning, she's like, yeah. where were you? Like, I called you, I texted you, like what's going on. And like, he just won't open up to her. And so she, like, she, she said, like, she wants to have good communication in their relationship. And she's like, if you're not going to talk to me, like you need to talk to somebody like, this is not okay. And like, I thought like that was a very powerful thing to showcase in this t- kind of a movie to be like, yeah, like, like, if you're in a committed relationship and just even being a single man, like you need to know how to deal with your stuff and like talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, and then she takes it further. She's like, I do not want our daughter to see you like stuff your feelings down inside. Like, yeah. I, like, like that I'm, she's basically, she's like, I'm not going to let that happen. Like you need to figure this out. And I thought that was really powerful, really well performed uh, and re- like a really touching, uh, captivating scene. That, you know, it's not about wasn't about boxing. Like like you were saying, like there's emotional depth to these movies. And to, for me, like this was that scene. Uh, I'm going to cheat and say every scene with uh, Jonathan Majors in it. I that's felt fair, like I, I felt like every time he was on the screen, you can feel what his character is going through. 
Um, specifically, if since I'm being, you know, if I had to pick a favorite scene, the scene when he's when he comes to the gym and he's fighting with um, the other boxer. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, the, the the Hispanic boxer and that scene where it's like he's 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 fighting and they're telling you a lot about how he's gonna fight. You know, he's fighting within the rules, but technically it's dirty. Like 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 uh, for those who don't know, punching a shoulder is not technically illegal because it is it is it's just not seen as an illegal hit, but it's just incredibly dirty to do. You can really hurt a boxer by aiming at their shoulder. Like nobody, you know, when you're box, you're not trying to kill theoretically, you're not trying to kill the person. <laughs> so uh yeah, so th- it's just kind of seen as like a dirty thing to do. So I felt like that scene, that whole scene where you know he 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 hurts, you know, they get into that fight. And he's kind of like letting it out a little bit. I felt like it was, it makes sense, right? Because the whole time you can tell that like that he's out not for revenge, but for vindication, right? And I and I felt like that's a different motivator, right? Revenge would be cheesy. You know what I mean? I'm coming back here to get you, Adonis, blah, blah, blah. The reality was he didn't, value Adonis as a friend because in his mind, Adonis was no longer his friend over 18 years ago. You know what I mean? So he's just a dude he knows to get what he wants. And I felt like that's what made the movie so compelling, right? That 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 like Adonis misses his friend. His friend does not, or at least wants to admit that he misses him. And that's that's the real conflict. And so the last scene between the two of them is incredibly touching, right? Um I don't think earnestly most fighters with that much bad blood would be able to look each other in the eye and say something to each other. Right. Um, also I thought it was kind of funny. Cause I'm like, I mean, loser purse is almost a million dollars for something like this. So <laughs> he's, it's not that big of a deal. He's going to be okay. He's gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah. Not that big of a deal. He lost. I mean, he still gets a pretty penny for losing. So Really not that big of a deal, but yeah, it's it's still it, it was still a very touching scene at the end. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, man. So, what did what were your final thoughts? What did you think? What did you think about the movie? Final thoughts. Um, you know what you're getting into with this kind of a movie. Like, there's gonna be punching. There's gonna be those emotional moments. It, it's gonna be fun. Um, everyone in this film, though, is, is very well cast. Performances are fantastic. Everyone's also very like unfairly attractive too. Like insane, like the yeah. muscles. Like there was a black woman behind me when they took off their shirt in the beginning. She's like, "Good lord!" I was like, "Jesus!" <laughs> well, dude, yeah, everybody. They're, Tessa they're, Thompson's very attractive. The, the, everyone's yeah. Tessa the, Thompson she, is she looks beautiful. His trainer, like she is. Like, yeah, everybody. She gets two lines finally at the end. <laughs> yeah, everybody is just like like immaculate, immaculate looking people. It's insane. I'm like, geez, that's that's uh, it's quite the collection. But yeah, yeah for for Michael B. Jordan, do we determine if this is his premiere? Like debut uh, director, I believe it is. Yes, I, I can't find anything to refute it. So yes, okay. I, so, I think it is. Hey, for his for, for his first time behind the camera like that, like major props. Yeah, go, go see this movie. Uh, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, um, I'm gonna echo that and say I like when actors direct. Um, because like you said, I think you know I think of like Ben Affleck, who I think is actually an underrated director. To be honest with you, yeah. Um, uh, you know, in this case, Michael B. Jordan. Um, you know, even uh, uh we watched um, uh, Cocaine Bear, that's directed by uh, jeez, uh, now I can't remember the actress's name. Uh, but an actress, I I'd have to look it up. But the point being is, I do like when actors. Uh, direct because I feel like it's kind of like when players become coaches and a lot of times you, they just have like an insight that they can bring to directing the actors themselves. You know what I mean? We watch a lot of movies and I think sometimes what happens where the director may not have the insight to talk to actors, you know what I mean? Um, and so sometimes that feels a little missing, you know? Um, it's very clear that this cast had great chemistry um and that everyone had it seemed like had had a really good time doing it uh there was no performances that were honed in you know what i mean everything was just like it was clean it was a very clean movie um i highly recommend watching it um i don't think you have to watch it in theaters 
I, I mean, you know, if you want to go back to theaters, like I talked about in our Cocaine Bear episode, that, you know, the movies like this remind me why I liked going to the theater in the first place. Not everything has to be part of the Disney or Warner Brothers, like, you know, machine, you know, that there are other movies outside of those uh, window, outside that window that's fun to watch. And I felt like this movie nailed that. So um, highly recommend it. Josh, if you have nothing else to say, I think that's the end of our show. Uh, If you like what you heard, let us know. If you watched Creed and enjoyed it, uh, let us know um, on our socials. You can find us at the Bandwagon Fan Podcast and uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Hit us up on YouTube. We have a lot of people watch on YouTube. That's awesome. Um, You guys can also listen to the podcast anywhere you find podcasts. So Apple, Google, Anchor slash uh, Spotify. Jeez, there's just so many places to watch a podcast or listen to a podcast. But um, yeah, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. The Bandwagon Fan Podcast is hosted by Josh Jimenez, Alex Mogosa, and me, AJ Soy. Our show is produced by Kate Smith and edited 